Dance of the Infidels is a, a collection of eight linked short stories uh, that focus on, for the most part, four characters who meet at the Savoy Ballroom in the late 1930s and strike up a friendship. It's an uh, interracial group. They're uh, a black woman, a white woman, a black man, and a white man, and they meet and they begin to, they get to know each other and they dance. My work has always been influenced by jazz. It's been, it's been informed and inflected by the music in, in, in many ways. But this particular book was inspired by working uh, for some time uh, with uh, Dexter Gordon and his wife Maxine on what would have been his autobiography. This was in the late 80s before he passed away in 1990. Intellectually, probably jazz still has uh, uh, a very important place in, in, in American culture, particularly in this polarized environment, because the thing about jazz is that it's basically uh, a democratic form of communication where you have the individual who is able to assert himself, herself, themselves in a way that still make room for the ensemble. Jazz is, um, it's a music of improvisation and reaction. Musicians creating uh, the conversation between themselves at, in the moment, on the spot. I became involved in, um, in, with the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party, Party in 1965, and I, went, I was in Mississippi uh, registering voters. Um, as a result of, of my involvement in uh, Mississippi in 1965, uh, I became, you know, very much involved politically in what was going on, not only in terms of the the uh, racial inequalities in, this, in America, but also with the uh, the war in Vietnam. And so, the activism that I was involved in was a combination of both. The Black Panther Party, uh, which was formed by Huey P. Newton and um, uh, Bobby Seale in 1966. Uh, Emer you know, evolved out of the civil rights movement. Uh, I guess for for Seal, for Newton, and others, um, the the idea of, of nonviolence as uh, as a, as a way of life seemed to, for many young, young people in my uh, generation, seemed to have run its course, and that there, because of all of the the violence against African American people historically. Uh, and of course, within in, in the 1960s, there, there was felt, it was felt that there needed to be some effort, which Malcolm X spoke about, to um, to address the attacks on blacks that were not being uh, addressed by the government in any way to protect the rights of blacks. So, of course, Malcolm articulated this that that by any means necessary meant that that black people had to be in a position to defend themselves. My uh, last novel, uh, Push Comes to Shove, which was published in 2009, it, uh, I guess the title suggests, uh, I think, what I was trying to do in that novel is to have, uh, to dramatize these various characters who are thrown into a situation politically where they have come to the view that um, nonviolence is not supportable in terms of uh, of uh, African Americans trying to achieve um, any kind of lasting and uh, significant change in this country. So that novel you know, emerged out of, I guess, my you know, involvement in the 1960s and wanting to write a novel about the messiness of, the, of that period of the 1960s. My biggest influence probably was um, uh, my parents. Both my parents are very, uh, um, keen about uh, you know their children since they didn't uh, go to college or my mother went for a short time my father uh, never finished high school and so education was something that uh, they were very uh, made a point of my father was a storyteller he told me stories about his uh, immediate family his grandmother 
and he told me these stories from the time I was about seven or eight years old, and, and he repeated them, you know, and I guess, and many of the stories that he told me were not necessarily stories that should be passed on, but because they were, many of them were quite harrowing. Those stories had everything to do with my wanting to become, my finding my way to wanting to write. The other thing would be my involvement in the civil rights movement, uh, particularly the time I spent in Mississippi, uh, because there were events that were being chronicled in the newspapers that often were at odds with the experiences that I was having uh, directly. Advice that I would give young writers is um, learn your craft. Read, read, read. Read as much of the best that has been written that you can and um, write. Not think about writing, not intend to write, but write and revise and revise and revise because that's the only way uh, for me that I, I think you learn to do anything competently and hopefully well is to read as much as you can, be open to the world. So I would say read, write, revise, and try to avoid uh, the dangers of being certain about what you think you know. In some ways it, it, it's similar to writing because if you come upon something where you stumble, you have to revise <laughs> what you have said to say it in a way that approximates what you wrote or what's on the page. And so the, the, uh, the stumbling or the going back to say something or read something again is very much like the revision process in writing. Jazz has influenced everything I've ever written. Uh, I, list, I was listening to jazz from, I guess, the time I could hear, because the music uh, in my home, my folk, you know, my parents, music was always there. My father was self-taught, played the piano. So I guess I assimilated music even before I was aware that that was what I was doing. So it's not surprising to me that, that music, particularly jazz, has informed my life uh, in writing and in all in many other ways in terms of try, living a life that you allow for the possibility of improvising of being able to to um, decide to do something or to change course uh, after you've sort of had some experiences and to improvise a way that you are doing something that means that you're making it up as you go along. And so, <laughs> for better and worse, I think in many ways that's how I've lived my life. Uh, and it it's, uh, has informed me as a writer. So um, I don't know what kind of person I would be. I would be a d another person if I didn't have uh, jazz in my life.